The icy moons of Jupiter. In some ways, these are some of the most exciting and interesting places in the entire solar system. They have some of the conditions that mean they could host microbial life, so we should definitely be studying them to learn more. The good news is that we're going to, right now in fact. On the day this video goes live on YouTube, we've just launched our next mission to Jupiter, JUICE. Originally scheduled to launch on April 13th, a risk of lightning led to a delay of precisely 23 hours and 59 minutes. Eventually, on the 14th of April 2023, we sent our next deep space probe on its way. The JUICE spacecraft lifted off from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana on an Ariane 5 rocket. This is the exact same model of rocket that so successfully launched JWST on Christmas Day 2021. Although this is scheduled to be the penultimate Ariane 5 launch, with the new Ariane 6 due to take over in the future. JUICE is an acronym that stands for the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer. Although personally, I think they should have just used the actual first letters from these words and called it Jimmy, rather than forcing the word JUICE out of it. I'm not even sure of the significance of choosing that word in particular, other than that it will study moons that have oceans, so it's kind of studying moon juice, but that is a real stretch. Jimmy is way cuter and way more whimsical. Luckily, the launch went really well, and the spacecraft is now on its way to the Jovian system. We're now left with tons of awesome launch footage and videos of the spacecraft being stowed away for launch, which is a genre of video I really enjoy. It's like a reverse unboxing. It looks so snug and ready for its mission, I just love it. Unfortunately, that is a long journey it's going on, and it won't actually arrive at its destination until July 2031, so we have a bit of waiting to do before we start seeing data on the moons. Also, JUICE is a heavy spacecraft, weighing about 4,800 kilograms, so to make this long journey, it's relying on gravitational assists from the Earth-Moon system, Venus, and twice more from Earth, as it completes a complicated path through the solar system. A gravitational assist is where the spacecraft flies close to these planets, and the gravity of that planet swings the spacecraft round and slingshots it away, with more energy than it had before, giving a speed boost and helping it make its journey quicker, and saving fuel. The launch had to happen now so that all of the planets are in the right place to give these assists when needed. Once it does arrive, it will orbit Jupiter and perform close flybys of the moons Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede. During these flybys, it will often get within 200 to 1,000 kilometers of the icy moons, allowing for excellent data to be taken. The plan is to fly past Europa twice, Callisto 21 times, and Ganymede 12 times. Finally, it will move from orbiting Jupiter to orbiting Ganymede in December 2034. This is the primary moon it's targeting on the mission, and this is the first time that any spacecraft will have orbited a moon other than our own. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system, and it's even larger than the planet Mercury. JUICE will stay in this orbit for at least nine months, possibly more if it has the fuel and power to do so, and it will study Ganymede in great detail. After that, once the propellant is gone, JUICE will deorbit and impact Ganymede, probably sometime at the end of 2035 or early 2036. JUICE has 10 state-of-the-art instruments on board to study these icy moons. We believe that all of these moons have deep subterranean oceans, likely made of largely water, and so our goal is to understand the habitability of these moons. Probably not for human-like life, but we want to know if it could be possible for microbes or even more complicated underwater life to exist here. After all, we think life on Earth started around vents at the bottom of the ocean, so this is certainly an intriguing thing to study on these moons. The 10 instruments on board include an optical camera called Janus for imaging the moons, and spectrometers that cover wavelengths from submillimeter to ultraviolet that can study Jupiter's clouds and explore the geological and icy features on the moons. RIME is a radar sounder that can penetrate to a depth of 9 kilometers to study subsurface structures of the icy moons. After all, if we think there are oceans under the surface, then we better be able to study things under the surface, and this will let us see their internal structures for the first time. Admittedly, we expect the oceans on the moons to be much further below the surface than 9 kilometers, 
but this radar data will teach us about the icy terrain leading to the oceans and reveal any pockets of water along the way. There's also a laser altimeter to study the tidal deformation of Ganymede and the topography of the moon's surface and a radio experiment called 3GM to try to understand the gravity field at Ganymede mapping the changing gravitational pull on the spacecraft as it moves around the moons. The final three instruments include a magnometer to study the Jovian magnetic fields and how it interacts with Ganymede's magnetic field. This is especially interesting because Ganymede is the only moon that we know of that actually has its own magnetic field. I think that since Earth's magnetic field is pretty important for protecting us from solar radiation and allowing life to develop on Earth, this is something we really want to understand on Ganymede. The Hubble Space Telescope has previously shown us aurorae on Ganymede, so this will let us begin studying the charged particles that follow the magnetic field lines and rain down on Ganymede and its tenuous atmosphere, causing the aurora. The magnetic fields around Jupiter are actually a huge problem that had to be considered when building JUICE, as they could fry the electronics on board if not properly accounted for. And also, the huge gravitational pull of Jupiter, the biggest planet in the solar system, also makes manoeuvring hard as it constantly tries to pull the spacecraft off course. Combined, you can imagine that building JUICE was very difficult and operating it will likely be just as tough. Finally, PEP, the Particle Environment Package, will analyze the plasma environment around Jupiter and the moons, while a radio and plasma wave instruments will look at radio emission and the plasma environment too, also around Jupiter and the moons. One nice thing of JUICE focusing on Ganymede so much, and not as much on the other moons, like its famous sister Europa, is that NASA is sending a mission to Europa that will arrive about the same time. That mission is called Europa Clipper, and we'll do some amazing, incredible things, and combining the two will give us an amazing insight into the moons and the whole Jovian system. I mentioned Clipper in this video here if you'd like to check it out and learn more about that mission. Sadly, Jupiter's fourth large moon, Io, isn't getting as much love in any of this, mostly because we don't think it has a subsurface ocean. And also, Io looks kind of like a potato, so that's also not great for publicity. JUICE will take a tiny bit of data on Io with the plasma environment instruments, and will determine the composition of its surface too, but that's about it. We still love you though, Io, the tasty looking potato moon. On the spacecraft itself, JUICE has some distinctive looking solar panels. There are 10 panels covering 85 square meters, measuring 27 meters from tip to tip, and with a total of 23,560 solar cells. So you might wonder why these cells can't power the spacecraft indefinitely. Remember that JUICE will be operating a long way from the sun. On Earth, these panels would produce enough energy to power a street of houses. Out by Jupiter though, they will receive 25 times less sunlight, meaning the panels would only power a small microwave. That's why we can't rely on these panels for power, and we also need fuel to keep going. And that's why JUICE will eventually be forced to plunge to its end on the Ganymedean surface. Incidentally, it's crashing into Ganymede for two reasons. One is that's where it's orbiting at the end, so it's most convenient. But more importantly, even if there is life in a subsurface ocean on Ganymede, we're pretty sure there isn't life on its surface. So any risk of contamination from any microbes that survived on the spacecraft from Earth is very minimal. That is opposed to Europa, which actually has a better chance of supporting life on the surface. So we don't want to crash into that moon, just in case. If the mission happens to reveal any chance of microbial life on Ganymede's surface, then the end of life plan for JUICE will change. Speaking of the end, let's leave it here for this video. Leave any questions you have in the comments below and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.